loose. Yeah, you're selling weed, you're selling cats, which is harder? Um, both are a lot of work if you do it right. Uh, if you get straight into it, I, I took great pride in both, making sure that uh, the guys that I grew weed, I was an investor, not really a grower, so my job was to make sure that the guys had their equipment, their lights, their sprinklers, their cameras, their fans, their dirt, uh, the best strains they could get, or the best seeds, uh, guys that were going to do uh, cross-pollination, making, I guess, different strains, uh, botanists finding those type of guys. Uh, same thing with the cats. Uh, I was lucky to get a hyperallergenic breed of cat in Mexico, uh, which is really rare for a Persian. I didn't think that existed, actually, a hypoallergenic well, I don't cat. I think there was more than uh, maybe 20 of this specific type of Persian that were uh, that was in North America or Mexico. Um, and again, I, I did a lot of testing with that cat because he traveled everywhere with me. And usually he's underneath the seat and you start up a conversation with somebody and you find out a lot of people are allergic to cats or dogs or both. And uh, two hours in, three hours into a flight, you know, you give them the story that I'm also allergic to cats and I wish I could have a cat or a dog, you know, I never got the pet one before and then pull out the cat and the guy says how deathly allergic he is to, a, you know, to animals or to fur and then pull out the cat and say, well, if you were really that allergic to this type of cat, I think you would have noticed, wouldn't you? And the guys, so usually it'll be the first time someone's pet a cat or a dog, uh, or if they had a really bad allergy, they had a fear of it. So it would take away that fear. And it was nice to see people do something they'd never done before. I had a couple people buy cats off of me that met, I met them on airplanes. And the cat was underneath the seat, very quiet, very well behaved, obviously in a little bag. And then a couple hours into the flight, you pull out the cat and the guy pets it and rubs his face and you go from there. And now uh, all Persians aren't hypoallergenic, right? This is the only one that I, that I had that was, uh, I had a bunch of ones after that were from his bloodline that seemed to be uh, hypoallergenic. This one specifically was bought uh, when I bought him off the breeder. He was hypoallergenic and they, Genetically, they said this cat was uh, was uh, like a modified cat on the genetic spectrum for, I guess, for age, for intelligence. I don't know what kind of bloodlines they've been doing, but it wasn't directly a Persian. It was a ragdoll cross with a Persian. Um, and I think uh, maybe years before it would have been a Norwegian forest cat, I think, originally that was crossed with a Persian, and they bred it back to a more flatter face is what the... Uh, How old were you when you started learning all this I've been breeding cats before that for probably five years just doing I was doing uh, I was doing Mancun Persian cross I was I, I tried to come up with my own breed of cat I wanted a bigger cat than a Persian so I wanted a Mancun for the size and they have a really nice fur, mm -hmm. uh, a little longer fur than I had a mane cone. Yeah. And uh, but they have a longer nose, so I don't. I didn't really want the nose, so I would start to breed uh, to get rid of the nose. And I started doing that with Siamese too. And then I started mixing uh, Siamese, Mancun, and Persian to get a specific breed of cat that I wanted, which was bigger. Some of them with blue eyes, because most Persians, if it depends if it's a Himalayan or not, uh, would have the different color eyes, gold or or, or green. Green yeah. depends if it was uh, chinchilla. Then it was uh, there. There's like it's obviously not a chinchilla. The yeah, little right, but sure, the, sure. A chinchilla is a type of cat that has a green eye. So I would. I mean, I I had over forty cats of different colors and breeds, all usually Persian mix or all Persian. I had I think 20, 25 all Persians that were just pure Persians, and then I would do the mixing with the ones I liked. Uh, for after six months, then you kind of know which ones temperament wise and uh, which ones are going to be. Uh, based on their nose, based on their eye color, which are going to be the ones that carry the genetics right. better. We'll get back to the cats. I want to ask you about the weed, though, also. Yes. Um, a tremendous expense to, to, to grow, right? I mean, there's a, the power, because you're constantly running high-powered lights. It's the, it's the air conditioning, too, and the lights. It's the keeping the room cool is another huge problem when you grow. So it's uh, if you're in California where I did most of my stuff, that's another thing too, just to clear up. Uh, I was never a renegade grower in Canada. I didn't grow much because we didn't have the licenses. Uh, so a lot of my friends that were growing in Canada were doing it illegally and I just wouldn't involve myself in that investment because of uh, teaching kids and knowing a lot of police officers and training a lot of kids that became police officers later. I ran a wrestling school for kids for years. That's how I supplemented my income and uh, I did pretty well with that too. 
and that was a separate business to try to get uh, the police the respect for that I was able to take a kid, uh, say 16, 17, 18, um, not promote smoking marijuana to him at all, but promote also uh, the healthy lifestyle of what a wrestler should be doing, uh, like a Tyson kid or a Harry Smith, uh, where kids that I had or guys I had in my school that never smoked a cigarette in their life, they never drank alcohol, uh, they were doing their 500 free squats a day, their military, uh, it's a military school type of program. So it, it worked very well with the police program when kids got into the uh, RCMP or for police training, they'd already been doing stuff that was so similar in the wrestling school for their daily training that they fit right in. And it was a lifestyle and uh, a mentality thing. And I think I got, uh, out of 50 kids I trained, I think I have 12 guys that became police officers, peace officers, or uh, EMS or uh, helicopter guys, stuff like that, that were all working in that field. So I was proud of that. And, uh, so the growing was California, you're talking it, about? It was, it was California, and then we got into going to Colorado a little bit uh, when Colorado legalized. Legalized, yeah. But for years, when no one really knew uh, a lot about the legalization of marijuana, California was always in a gray area. It was federally not legal, but for the state of California, with a license from your doctor, depending on how many plant counts you had, we were very specific with that stuff, too. If you had 100 plants, you only grow 100 plants. It depends on the room. And uh, there was like little regulations and stuff, I think that still go on to this day of like uh, clones and plants, if you have to have a certain amount of each one or if they count just the plants. And so it's tricky. Would what, they send inspectors to check they, all this we, stuff we, we, you, They would, we never had, luckily we never had an inspector come uh, to inspect anything. We did have a couple guys that did stuff incorrectly that got caught for, for growing incorrectly and they went to jail for it. And, uh, Sad, sad. It's, sometimes that's what happens with investments. You hope everything goes well and the due diligence is done properly, and uh, sometimes things are overlooked or missed, and paperwork's not done. And that's where uh, I would trust guys because I'm not there all the time. Mm -hmm. So my job would be to come up with, say, if it was 20 grand, come up with 20 grand, give them the money, and come back whenever I was in town doing my wrestling shows to see the operation, uh, check out the weed. Mostly I was a quality sampler guy too. That was my thing because I smoked so much. Uh, I, and it traveled so much, I usually knew uh, more about the weed than the growers did themselves for smoke-wise, quality-wise, taste-wise, uh, how, and how high you'd get from it, or the different strains of sativa versus an indica, stuff like that. And this was before marijuana had really hit. I mean, there was still, there was Snoop Dogg, there was some movies about the weed, but it wasn't mainstream yet. It was still kind of in a gray area. And I used to t tell people that marijuana was uh, 10 times better than pills, that I never took pills all my years of wrestling. I only had one serious injury my whole career, and I've had a couple little injuries in between, but I, I thought marijuana always healed me, uh, made me have a different mentality. Um, sometimes people disagree with being controversial,